Hey everybody, welcome to The Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles. This is your boy, Kevin Riles. And this week we were talking about protesting your property taxes. How do you do it? I get that question all the time here in the office. In fact, I just got it. Uh, and so I thought I would just tape a video, not only for you guys, but for the client that asked me that. And so I thought it'd be a good podcast episode. So as always, I try to bring you the good information. DJ, hit that music, please. Support for this program comes from the Digital Broadcasting Network. Presenting podcasts and web series from everyday people who have an extraordinary passion to make the world a better place. Hey everybody, welcome to the Real Estate of Life with Kevin Riles. This is your host, Kevin Riles, shooting from the home base, literally home this week. I wanted to shoot a quick video slash audio podcast about um, filing your property protest. Uh, I've just got some calls into the office and um, text and actually got a message on Facebook uh, from people that know that the deadline is uh, soon approaching. I'm taping this on May 14th and for most people the deadline is, is May uh, 15th but don't worry you can still file a late protest uh, under certain circumstances. So want to quickly go over filing your property tax for, uh, protest so that you kind of know what to do since I get this question almost every year around this time. So first and foremost what are you protesting? Um, if you own property, a homestead specifically, but, but any type of property in the state of Texas, you get a notice every year saying that the appraisal uh, district has gone out and they've appraised your property to be worth X. Uh, so let's say that that's $250,000. Uh, and so what they're saying is your taxes uh, and tax rate will be multiplied times that value and that's how your taxes are determined from everything from your school taxes all the way to your mud taxes to your levy improvement district taxes to your houston community college taxes to your county taxes so that value is really important uh, and it can change year to year now if you have a homestead exemption uh, we are a homestead state in texas meaning that if you identify the property as your homestead that you have certain redemptive rights when it comes to foreclosure and that's a whole Another topic uh, when you when we get to that, uh, maybe I'll bring someone else in, or maybe I'll bring uh, the Gransbury the attorney and Natasha Gransbury can explain that a little bit better. But essentially, it gives you rights if you ever get foreclosed on. But it also, if you name something your homestead, most of the taxing authorities will give you a discount uh, on your taxes. So they'll give you up to um, some of them up to fifteen percent, some th some of them up to ten percent. And when I say discount, they will discount the appraised value and then multiply their tax rate uh, times that. So let's take a hypothetical situation. Let's say your your property is appraised for $250,000 and the tax rate for this particular municipality is 1%. Uh, that means that um, your particular taxes for that, let's say it's school taxes, is going to be $2,500 uh, for the year, right? And so you could see where if you're um, property tax went up to 275,000, uh, then your uh, your taxes will go to 2750 because again we're still multiplying one percent. You're not getting a discount off of that one percent. Uh, you're getting a discount off the uh, appraised value. So that's why I say that the appraised value is up of utmost importance. Uh, and so every year, the appraisal district, and I'm gonna put in air quotes for those on video, goes out and determines uh, what your property is worth. And the reason I do air quotes is, I just don't believe that they go out, I know they don't go out to every house because that would be uh, time consuming and manpower intensive. However, they look for trends in neighborhoods and things of that nature and they determine what your market value and tax assessed value are, which are, by the way, can be different. So one of the questions I always get uh, when people want me to sell their property, whether it be commercial or residential is, hey, uh, what is the market value of my property? I looked online and it said that the market value was $225,000. Uh, and so what I tell people is that the appraisal district has to value your property as of January 1st of the year of the assessment. So we're in 2019, I'm shooting this in 2019. And so um, the value is determined based on what your property is worth the first day of the of the new year, so January 1st, 2019. Uh, so with that, I always tell people that one, appraisals change from month to month, sometimes week to week, depending on what other closings are going on. So your market value on your tax statement is not really a good indicator 
of what your true market value is. Sometimes it's high and honestly sometimes it's low as well depending on where your property is. And another thing you have to realize is your tax assessed value is not your market value. They are two mutually exclusive things meaning that they are totally separate. Your tax assessed value can be an indicator of your market value um, but it is not the same. In my experience, especially in Harris County, uh, which surrounds Houston, um, there's typically, a, a, on average, a 20% delta between your tax assessed value and your market value, all right? Uh, and so, therefore, you need a real estate professional who has access to comparable sales to really tell you what your market value is. So those of you that are trying to sell your properties on your own, you might be leaving money on the table uh, when you're looking at your tax bill to determine what your market value is worth. The best example I can give you of that is uh, my very first house. Um, uh, the tax assessed value at the time uh, was about $51,000. When I sold that house, I sold it for $180,000. Uh, so the market obviously was way different than what the tax assessed value was. Now that's a huge difference, but it tells you that if I had used $51,000 as my market value, then I would have left over $130,000 on the table. So again, tax assess value, market value are two totally separate uh, things. So what typically happens is you get a letter from the appraisal district saying that, hello, Kevin, we've assessed your property and your property this year is worth $500,000. Uh, and, um, and based on this $500,000, we anticipate your taxes next year to be X. And so they'll show you kind of what your taxes are based on that $500,000 evaluation. Uh, they'll also do the discounts for you in a little chart on the letter to show you if you have a homestead exemption, which I do, uh, and, and what, what that will equal to. And then they'll multiply that times your tax rate, uh, and that gives you what your taxes are. So. Again, that's a very important number. It also tells you in that letter, if you disagree with this, uh, you can file a protest. And, and, and that's the reason for this particular podcast today, how to file a property uh, tax uh, protest. And so with that being said, they usually provide a form in that letter to allow you to do it. Some appraisal districts also allow you to do it online. And I'll talk about that in a second. I actually have the form here with me. And if you'll uh, if you have the form, the form is Form 50-132. The form is promulgated actually by the state of Texas. Uh, so it may be pre-filled out by your, um, by your particular taxing authority, uh, your particular county, but the form is the same no matter which county you are in, in the state of Texas. And, it, and if you go to the comptroller's site in the state of Texas, they actually have a blank form that's not pre-filled out that you can uh, fill it out on your uh, own. And so at the very top, there's the appraisal district's name. So I live in Fort Bend County, so therefore it would be, uh, you know, Fort Bend County, my appraisal district account number, which would be on the letter that I received, and then the tax year that I'm filing the protest for, which in this case uh, would be 2018, because again, it's as of January 1st of the year um, uh, prior. So I'm sorry, the current year, uh, the value, and then you're doing the year prior. So section one of that form just tells, asking you about the property and your contact information. Section two asks for the physical address. And if it's not a physical address, if you're protesting like land that hasn't gotten an address yet, then you would put the legal description of the property. And then section three goes over the uh, reasons for the protest. And so I'm gonna read off a couple of incorrect appraised value. Well, that's what we're talking about today. Um, you, uh, what I'm gonna talk more about is that, you know, hey, I believe my property is worth lower than this. And let me pause right there and say this. Because your tax assess value and your market value are mutually exclusive, you want your tax assess value to be as low as possible. You don't want it to be high. A lot of people think, oh, if I contest my taxes and I get it down lower, then I'm, I'm erasing equity and my house is going to be worth less. That is not simply not the case. You want to, that number to, uh, to be as low as possible so that when you multiply it times your tax rate, your taxes are lower, all right? So those two things have uh, nothing to do with each other. The other, another reason on here is value is unequal to compare it with other properties. You can check as many of these um, that apply, by the way. It's not one or the other. Properties tax, uh, the, another reason is property should be taxed in uh, name of a taxing unit. So if they had a, a, a it's in the wrong county. Property is not located in the appraisal district uh, and uh, should not be included in, our, in their district. So sometimes there are issues where you may be on the borderline and you, sh you shouldn't be getting taxed from that particular, um, that particular taxing entity. 
you didn't send me the notice failure to send required notice hey you didn't send me the notice you can't um, appraise me uh, or you have to give me a chance to respond uh, an exemption was denied uh, modified or canceled so if you apply for one of the exemptions that Texas allows for you to have which we'll do another podcast on that homestead is one of those exemptions uh, disabled veteran is another uh, over 65 exemption all of those are exemptions as well uh, and then uh, change of use in land uh, in other words I went from an ag I went from regular use to now I have agricultural use or something of that nature the owner's name is incorrect the property description is incorrect or even other you can kind of fill in what you want so that's in section section three uh, and so in section four it says additional facts and what is your opinion of your property's value uh, and so depending on the reason you're filing the protest in this case we're talking about the value being uh, too high you would put the the value there so if my property is valued or my home is valued at five hundred thousand dollars and i think it's valued at four hundred thousand dollars then i would put four hundred thousand dollars in that particular blank uh, provide facts that may help you resolve this protest i'm gonna stop here and say that um there are a myriad of facts to say that my house is worth less than what it it, uh, it is one of those facts is and the major facts is i know what my neighborhood is selling for uh, and i know that my house just like john's house down the street and the same floor plan and we have the same uh, things in his house just sold uh, for four hundred thousand uh, and so I know because my house is like John's house that it's not worth five hundred thousand. Uh, and so you would put that information in here. Uh, if you have John's address, you would put the address at one two three ABC Street, uh, sold for four hundred thousand on on October first two thousand eighteen. And therefore, there's no way my house can be uh, worth five hundred thousand. Uh, and so at this point, typically you're going to need some assistance. And I say assistance. Um, with you know the advent of Zillow and the advent of other sites some of you now can pull comps reports or at least see sold uh, at least general information about even HAR.com general information about uh, comps uh, and comps are comparable sales to yours within that time frame remember you're pulling comps from January 1st uh, of the prior year through January 1st of your current year All right so if a house just sold yesterday and it's much lower you can't use that comp for to the previous year you have to use that comp next year so to put some numbers around that I can't use a comp in 2019 uh, to protest 2018 taxes right so that's that's what I mean by the prior year so what you want to do is at this point uh, if you're able to get comps online if you don't have access to a realtor uh, then I would search in your neighborhood similar houses on HR.com Zillow and see if you can pull comps and then actually put addresses to say hey this house is just like mine it's the same square footage has the same lot size and here are the addresses and what they sold for and they also between 400 and 425 so there's no way my house can be worth 500,000 all right if you have access to a realtor who's willing to do that for you then you can ask your realtor hey can you pull comps for me uh, in my neighborhood I'm protesting my taxes and most realtors uh, especially if you've used them to sell or buy the house would we'll do that pro bono I don't know a lot of realtors that charge for it uh, if they do charge for it it's worth the payment uh, for a couple of hours or a hundred bucks or whatever the case may be to get that information for the chance of reducing your taxes uh, at all and I have clients that call me all the time to do it I do it uh, um, you know for my clients uh, that have used me uh, just as a service a benefit as a lifetime you know their lifetime a realtor and I do this also for my commercial clients uh, as well and so um, uh, so that's where you want to basically build a story as to why you believe now it may not be comps I'll tell you a story when I bought my current house uh, where I'm taping this uh, podcast uh, it was right before uh, hurricane um, uh, I'm sorry it was uh, I bought a foreclosure the first story is I bought a foreclosure the foreclosure was um, in, in disrepair I probably spent around 30 grand uh, just being able to renovate the house to livable condition uh, we spent more money since then but just to get in the house and, and make sure that you know we could live in it is around 30 grand and so my assessed value that year was significantly higher than what I paid for the house and so um, I did this exact same process uh, and in section 5 it talks about how do you want a hearing do I want an in-person hearing do I want to do it by telephone or do I want to uh, submit a written affid uh, 
uh, David, uh, affidavit, I'm sorry, uh, of evidence and deliver it to the uh, appraisal review board before the hearing begins. I chose in person because I felt like I could make a better case. And what I did was I explained why my house was in disrepair. Um, I had water leaks. I had all kinds of stuff that was going on. I took pictures. Um, well, as a part of the renovation, I had pictures uh, of what the house looked like. Uh, and I went in there and I told them, hey, this is the, was the condition of the house when I bought it. I have done some repairs to kind of get into it, but I still haven't finished. And at that time, I was actually able to get around $80,000 off my assessed value because the appraisal board or the appraisal district, they can't, they don't see the inside of your house. So they're just going from the outside and, and riding around or looking at comps in your area. They're, they can't assess what, what the inside of your house looks like. And so therefore, I was able to show them, hey, my house on the inside is not a, uh, you know, this particular value. In fact, I've had to spend this amount of money just to be able to live in it. And so that's a reason where I didn't have need comps in that particular situation. I just needed to show them the level of work. So with Hurricane Ike, I did the exact same thing because I had roof damage. Uh, and I had uh, all of the, I'm sorry, Hurricane Harvey uh, had roof damage and things of that nature. And so I went in and protested based on the fact that my roof was in disrepair. I had to uh, also get some work done in the bedrooms and things of that nature. So condition, a lot of people just look for low comps. The condition of your house is important because remember, they can't see the inside of your house. So if you have some things that need to be updated and they're comparing your house, if every other house in your neighborhood is selling for 300000 but they've all been updated and have new floors, new paint, new carpet, new appliances, new countertops, and you haven't updated your house, you need to bring that to their, their attention. So therefore, you can say, hey, all of these houses, yeah, they sold for 300 but my house hasn't been updated. I want to update it maybe one day, but it hasn't been updated. So and therefore... Uh, it would cost me about $40,000 to update it. And so I want that off my appraised value. All right. Uh, and then, um, and so if the next section says ARB hearing procedures, if a protest goes to a hearing and the ARB automatically sends uh, each party a copy of the uh, ARB's hearing procedures, I want ARB to send me a copy of the hearing procedures. So you can request basically a transcript of your hearing. And then you, at the very end, it asks you to sign. It asks you who you are. Are you a property owner? Are you a property owner's agent? Are you other? Property owner's agent. You can hire uh, a company uh, or a person, uh, a certified property tax um, person. There are people that there's a certification that uh, is honored by the state and the uh, counties uh, where you can have somebody do this on your behalf. And typically what they charge is a percentage of what they save you. So if they save you $50,000, they may charge you 1% of that or a percentage of uh, of their savings. And so for some people, that is just easier. Hey, let me just hand it over to you. Those folks are used to doing it. They know what works and what doesn't. I've always done it myself, but I highly respect people that do that uh, as well as far as hire someone. There are also large companies um, that uh, do it, and you can Google those uh, companies, pro property tax protest companies, uh, and get a myriad of folks that uh, will do that. And so again, um, I tell people they should protest their property taxes every year. Although I tell people that I don't actually do it all the time. This year, my property, my actually value went down. Uh, and I thought it went down sufficiently enough to where I didn't feel like I needed to protest it. So I'm not going to protest for 2018. Um, however, I'm always watching it because I have multiple properties. So I have a property, some land in uh, Waller County that they've been going up significantly. And the crazy thing about that is because it's not homestead, one of the great things about homesteading your property is that the appraisal district can only increase your value up to 10%, right? Up to 10% of value. It's capped at 10%. They can't go over 10%. But if you don't have a homestead exemption, it can go up 100, it can go 100, 150, it can go up 300% in any given year based on what's going on. And so I have some land that's not even accessible. I need to get a right of way to it. And that particular land um, has gone up 50% every year. And so I'm, I fight that every year in Waller County. And so, uh, again, you're, you're, if, if you have not filed your protest, it's not too late. Let me cover one last thing. You can file an online protest in most of the counties. Uh, I know in Fort Bend County and Harris County, you can file an online protest. Online protest is basically filling out this document online and submitting your proof online and it just saves time saves you having to take off work and go up there 
But I know in Fort Bend County, and I'm assuming in other counties, that if you do that, then you're basically waiving your right to a to a um, in-person uh, protest. Um, they're basically saying you get to choose one or the other, not both. Uh, and so you still can, um, once you protest, and, and let's say that they come back at a value, no, we certify the value that uh, of 500,000, that's what we said, that's what it is. You can't ask for a hearing uh, after um, you're not able to come to an agreement. And then there's a whole process behind that that is beyond the scope of this podcast. But I think it's important for you to know that online, and, and that's what I've done the last two times, uh, the time that I bought the house and had all the work and I want to show pictures, uh, I did that in person. But the last two times I protested, I've done it online just from a schedule standpoint. So just remember uh, that it is important uh, that you have a right to protest. And I think it's important to protest. So I always try to bring you guys information that is helpful. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have questions, you always can contact me at 281 281- 403-3700, or my email address is kevin at kevinrilescommercial.com. And of course, most of you guys know I'm on all the, the websites. It's Kevin Riles, uh, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, all that kind of stuff. So hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next week. Do you have questions about any of the topics I'm talking about? If you have questions, let me know. Email me at Kevin at KevinRiles.com. Again, that's Kevin at KevinRiles.com. I'm going to do a podcast just on the questions uh, that you guys are sending me. So feel free to send them to me. Again, that's Kevin at KevinRiles.com. 